So now that we are aware of how instance is able to access the internet or for that matter, we want to access our EC2 instances from the local desktop or laptop that we have, we want our instances to have visibility so that we can have a transaction and this visibility is provided by the internet gateway. And as we have rightly mentioned here, an internet gateway serves two purposes. The first one is actually provides a target in your VPC route table for internet routable traffic. And it also can help you perform network address translations. So don't worry about NAT. That's what we are going to discuss in the next upcoming sessions. And AWS tells us an internet gateway is a horizontally scaled, redundant and highly available VPC component that allows communication between your VPC and the internet. And it supports both IPv6 and IPv4. And there's no additional charge for having an internet gateway in your account. So you don't have any charges for having an internet gateway. And if you're still thinking about what an internet gateway is, I would like to tell you that please don't think it's some rocket science stuff. It's just a logical interface that helps you to connect to the internet from the VPC. And it's not a physical device. And if your VPC does not have an internet gateway, then the resources in the VPC cannot be accessed from the internet. Conditional two, if in case you have something like a VPN connection or a direct connect to your on-premise office for your traffic flow. So the next important thing and the thing that we are here for is to understand how to enable internet access. So here is our VPC with our subnet for our AZ that has an EC2 instance that needs internet access in turn has to be accessible from the outside world as well. So for that to work, the first step is to create an internet gateway and create a route table for the subnet that we have our instances at. But even before that, we need to ensure that our instances in the subnet have a globally unique IP address that can be your public IPv4 address that we have like this one here or elastic IP address or IPv6 address. Because in order for our instances to be accessed from the internet, we need to have a public IP attached to that. But that doesn't solve the problem there. You also need to make sure that you also need to make sure that the network access control lists and security group rules. So you have to ensure that you have the network access control list and security group rules allow the relevant traffic to flow to and from your instance. And once you have added the route for your subnet and for the incoming traffic to be passing through the internet gateway, you should now be sorted out and you should be able to access the internet and your instances will also be visible from the local machine. And the note that you see here below to provide your instances with the internet access without assigning them public IP addresses, you can use a NAT device instead. That is what we will learn in the next session. So if you haven't subscribed, please do that right now. So let's discuss some points on the internet access for the default and non-default VPCs. Because you might say to me that Pytholic, we did not create any internet gateways to access the public internet. And we were also able to access our instances from the local machine when we did not create any VPCs and we were using the default VPC. So for this, we need to understand the below differences with what actually comes by default for you to access the internet for your VPCs. The first one is internet gateway. So with the default gateway, it comes automatically with the default VPC. But for non-default VPC, it's yes. But if you created the VPC using the first or second option in the VPC wizard, that is from your console. Otherwise, you must manually create and attach the internet gateway. So the second one is route table with route to internet gateway for IPv4 air traffic. So that is basically your 0.0.0.0 slash .0, 0. So that is also yes for default VPC and the same for non-default that is yes if you created the VPC using the first or second option in the VPC wizard. So the route table actually comes by default which has a route to the internet gateway for IPv4 traffic for the default VPC. So that is why we are able to actually access that. And for the IPv6 that's the third point. So that's a no for both default and non-default until and unless you explicitly assign IPv6 but mostly it is for IPv4. And next up is for the public IPv4 address automatically assigned to instances launched into the subnet. And yes, it is a yes for the default subnet. And that is why you were able to access the internet without creating an internet gateway because the public IPv4 address automatically is assigned to instances launched into the subnet. So if you select the default subnet in your default VPC, a public IPv4 address will automatically be assigned to this. 
and for the non-default you need to specify that so it's a no and that is for the non-default subnet and for the ipv6 it's no for both as predicted